Okay, we're back for part two. Now, I heard some really helpful comments um, uh, on how to test some of this yesterday. Um, and the first one is, we can test the starter motor and see if it's the solenoid that's the issue by um, putting power across the two of those. So if we get power across the two of those, this won't actuate, so it won't come out. It won't cause this lever to pull it and pull this out. Okay, but what it should do is it get this spinning. All right. So if we start by doing that. Okay. So we're clearly. Um, in fact, it doesn't even need it across the both. It just needs it here. Oh no, it doesn't need it across both. Okay. Well, how did I get it going? Okay, so it just needs it on this one. So, so we know that the starter motor um, works. The, there was no heat shield for this on the car, and the TL7 is meant to have a heat shield to protect the solenoid. So it's entirely possible this is burnt out. But the next thing is we're going to take this off, and we're going to clean this up, and then we're going to have another look at it. Okay, next thing to do is to make sure that this is moving freely. So this is um, apparently the, called the core. I call it the lever. Um, it's moving freely and it should move this in and out freely. So if I just do that, I mean, that, that's moving very easy. There's no resistance there at all. So um, I know that this pit of the starter motor is good as well. So next bit is to see if this will withdraw properly so I've got this clamped on so we've got it earthed I should just need to connect to this um, spade connector here and we should see this withdraw okay well we're getting some movement just not much so um, I think I need to have a look at this in a bit more detail Okay, I've taken the plastic off because I was told that it's not needed, so I don't need to worry about it. Um, and um, now, and I've given it a very quick clean just to have a look. And um, so, when I touch this now, there we go. Again, it coming all the way in and releasing. So actually. I think part of the problem is making sure I've got a good enough connection because if I don't, if I come at it, it doesn't, you know, it's always, oh, it, well, I don't know if you saw the sparks that time and nothing coming in. Okay, so it, it seems to, there we go. I don't know, you see that? It seems to, oh, it's getting a bit more consistent maybe. There, I'm touching it now and I'm not getting anything. Maybe that's because that has to be in. Okay, so, th yeah, so this will only work when this is actually inside and held in place. Okay, that's good to know. All right, so I th think it can go in a bit more than that. But we do have a solenoid that is appeared to be does appear to be working. Um, so I think it might be a case of trying to look at some of these connectors or something next and seeing what we've got going on there. Okay, I've given everything a good clean and just to um, see it's actually you know we've got a lot more string in there now um, so um, there are things to do around checking the ohms and things like that um, but actually I think this should work 
as is, so I'm not going to worry too much about that, I don't think. Um, I'm going to do, am I going to do a bit more cleaning on it? I'm going to try putting it on and see if I can get it to work first, and then I'll see where I go. Right, I'm not sure if I've done something wrong again, because this is where the power normally gets connected. And if I just connect power to it now, it starts spinning. Um, which I'm pretty confident is not what I want. So I'm wondering if this... So on the new ones, they don't come with this, but I wonder if it was necessary for the old ones or something and was insulating it in some way. Um, yes. I mean, I'm, I'm dead pleased that I know the starter motor is working um, because... I can get a new solenoid for about um, 50 quid as opposed to 270 for everything. So so that's nice. Um, but I also know now that this solenoid does work. I just need to work out how to um, get it working correctly. Uh, the other thing is, if I... I'll just show this quickly. Um, we can't actually hear, I can't hear that solenoid engaging at all. Um, so when I engage power, I don't hear anything here, so it sounds like it's not moving now. Um, and I don't quite know why not suddenly, so I'm going to take it apart again and have another look. Whilst I'm doing that, I'm also going to recharge this a bit. Right, I sorted that problem. That was a reassembly issue. Um, there was the the, um, the spring. I had put the the solenoid inside the spring and then and cap on top cap needs to go on first and then the solenoid um, so you can see now I've got that powered up it's not turning when it's on there when I bring it over here okay so I know that works I also um, know I can hear well I could before I heard the I heard it go before, but I can't hear it now. Oh dear. Right, we'll take it off and have another look. So this is what I was just talking about. When it was just powering up, I had put it on like this. But actually, it must go like this. So, just in case anyone else wants to make the same silly mistakes I have or as an opportunity to avoid them. Right, I just want to check this is actuating still. But I haven't done something to it. It is. It's, I mean, it's flying out a bit too much, but it's not going in as well as it was, actually. I just don't know if that's because I can't get a good enough connection on here. Cause I'm pretty sure it went right. Yeah, see, I think it wants to get right in like that. That's as far in as I want it going. 
but it won't go there every time. See? It needs a bit of... Um, so we'll hold it when I push it in light. So I wonder if actually I do need to check the ohms and stuff and see if that's where the issue is. So um, let's see if I can work out how to do that now. Okay, so here's my digimeter. We got that in view, and I'm checking ohms. So we're getting 1.3, 1.2. Um, I was on the solenoid. This is is that 1.2 again? Oh, 1.5. But this is um, right on the tip. So this is just trying in several different places around here. I assume the key one's here, and that's where I'm reading a 1.2. Uh, 1.3, 1.2. It does go off a bit occasionally. And the metal ring is reading. a lot more. 2.7. But that's 1.2, and I'm sure that must be what I'm really interested in is what it's like on the solenoid. Um, out here again it's 1.1, 1.2 so um, I'll go and see, I've got something which tells me what it should be and I'll have a check of that. Okay I've got the information here for the solenoid so I don't know, I'm assuming I'm measuring it correctly but um, it says pull-in winding resistance measured between marked WR wire connector and STA terminal. Um, so the WR, I mean I, I actually don't know what any of that means to be honest. Um, oh there's STA there, right okay. So I'm going to assume that Actually, I was measuring it wrong, and we're going to try measuring it from here to the SDA there. Uh, okay, and we're getting 1.2, 1.1. Okay, we're getting 1.1 again. Um, the alternative is. Oh, and for that it should have a reading of 0.25 to 0.27 ohms. And then it's got holding resist winding resistance measured between the WR connector and the unit body. Okay, so um, I don't know, I mean it can't be the unit body being, oh it could be that. And that's given a 1.7. Okay, 1.6. Um, but that should be 0.76 to 0.8. Okay. So. That doesn't seem right. Now. Um, what. Um, Mike from Velo Duo Bicycles has said. Is. Let's see if I can find that quickly. Um, to get this, If you get the solenoid to actuate. And it does not operate the starter. There are contacts at the rear of the solenoid under the under the cover. These are supposed to be self-cleaning and operating them a number of times might do the trick. I have never gone so far as to try and remove the cover and clean the contacts, but you may have nothing to lose. Okay, so actually it might be that I just need to operate this a few times and see if that does it. So um, we'll go off camera and do that. Right, I've cleaned up all of these as best I can. I haven't tried to take the backlight off. Um, and it, it's just not, I'm not getting a consistent squeeze there. So, the starter motor will go fine, but um, I'm just trying to get it to activate the um, to get it to come out here and it, it just 
it just won't do it. So as soon as it's got any pressure on it, it can't cope with anything. So I do think I'm going to have to replace the um, solenoid. Um, but the rest of it is okay. So you know that's that's all right. Um, so I think what we might do now is just clean this up properly, since we know we're going to keep it. Um, I'll get the the whole of this bit comes as a replacement, I think. So I need to check that actually, um, because if it's not, then then I need to do more. But um, yeah, I think we can we can clean and clean tidy this up and paint it and. Um, then move on. Okay, so off camera, um, I've been cleaning up my alternator. I don't know if you can remember what it did look like, but this was all kind of, you know, um, white stuff, and it was all rusted, very rusty, including this. Most of this I cleaned with this all done up and just um, spinning it like that, and so it span around and everything. But to get it any clean, I had to take this off. Um, now I don't know the right way to do that, um, but I know the way I did it, which was I put a screwdriver in here like that to hold it, and then I used my torque wrench on the lowest setting possible to to do it, and then it came off quite easily. So, um, so we're gonna. Um, get the rust off these bits here and we're going to paint these bits up so we've got um, a nut, a washer, a part of a um, pulley and we've got the other half of the pulley which is keyed we can get it up okay so we've got the other half of the pulley which is keyed and it's pretty mucky on the inside and then we've got the um, whatever this bit's called which is also keyed fan for want of a better word um, and then inside we've got a very very mucky grimy looking alternator uh, it doesn't look great on the in the in there so I think I'll I was going to spray it with um, easy drying contact cleaner because um, that should clear it up a bit um, but you know all of these parts are very rusty and uh, I'm sure that the electronics won't want to be rusty so I'm not going to take it part more than that. I don't know if you can actually. You probably can from the other side. But I think in alternators you only ever replace the contacts. So we're just going to give this a spray. And at the very least that has made the coils look a lot cleaner. So... Anyway, we'll put that to the side and um, we'll go off and clean these up and make them look better. So there's my, my alternator and starter motor both cleaned up and painted again. Um, and. I'll put those away. Now, obviously I haven't tested the alternator because I have no way of testing um, that because um, I haven't got a running car. I don't have anything that I can even need to test it on the bench, I don't think. So um, so I haven't got that to test. And I've still got the solenoid. Now I'm not sure at this point whether that is going to need a new one or um, I can actually still do something. Um, I thought I'd next time I visit my parents, I'll take this up and uh, get my dad to have a little play. He um, has the patience and uh, the engineering experience and knowledge that he can think these things through. Um, or if anyone else says, no, you haven't done this yet, 
um, or I've missed something, then please let me know and I'll, I'll get it back out. Otherwise, I'm going to put these away. Um, before I end this episode, I'm just going to show you a little bit of the engine turning. Um, you will see that I've actually, in that in this following clip, made some progress with the water pump as well. But uh, as I said, this is all a bit out of sequence at the moment. So um, please ignore that. So we've got the distributor turning. Have I got it all in? Yeah, we've got the distributor. Can you see the water pump? Not really see the water pump, but the water pump you can see going as well. And we can see our rockers coming up and down. So the other thing, let's have a look at, if we can zoom in on it. So I'm trying to zoom in here so we can see if the pram is moving up and down as well. So it's at its peak at the moment and we should see that begin to get pushed down. There it goes. Good, all the way. So are they all moving? Well they must be actually to be fair. And we've got a bit of stiffness at some point in the turn. And there, so I don't know what those ones are. Anyway, um just a nice treat for me that was really to see what it all looked like um, see it moving so I'm gonna put that back together now and think about that water pump <laughs>